So I've been using the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 for exactly a month. And in this video, I'm not going to go through the overall specs of the monitor since I've already covered that in my previous video, which you will find it over here. So in this video, I'll be going through my overall usage using this monitor every single day. Let's first start with the design and the build of the monitor. Now, I really love and appreciated the rear part of the monitor a lot to a point where I've placed it right in the middle of the room instead of typically putting it against the wall. However, by doing so, I don't get the actual core lighting backlight effect as it will reflect better if it's near a curtain or a wall because I rather have the rear part of the monitor shown instead of hiding this very nice aesthetic part of the monitor. Now speaking of the back, the materials are made of plastic but due to its glossier finish, it looked very premium and felt like it was a material that would last for years to come. Which kind of made me appreciate the rear part of the monitor even more. And since I love white, which if you know me well enough in this channel, you would know that. Because the rear was once again something that I appreciated more compared to having a typical black finish for a gaming centric monitor. Now, I did mention in my previous video whether I would find the rear headphones hanger at the back of the monitor to be practical. Well, it totally was. Because of the fact I placed the whole entire setup right in the middle of the room, so it was easy to just stand up, reach out to the headphones when I needed them and put them back when I was done using it. And the little channel at the back for the cable management was also a huge plus to keep all the cables nice and clean, which is something like a medium level OCD guy like me really appreciated. Now, as for the monitor stand, it was extremely sturdy and held very well during my daily usage. Now, as I mentioned in my unboxing and my first impressions video, please ensure that you use a large table to accommodate the overall space that the stand takes, which is about 17 inches on both sides, on the left and the right. So during my usage, it was fine because of the size of my table. And speaking of which, I will link the exact EVs table that I'm using once again with my promo discount code in the comment section below. Now, even with his wide legs, the placement of the monitor was within the arm's length, which was an ideal position and the monitor's flexibility of the height, swivel and the tilt adjustments made the overall experience using the monitor very ergonomic indeed. However, I am considering getting a monitor arm instead since you can do that with this particular monitor, which I saw a monitor mount on Amazon that also had some excellent reviews as well, just to get that extra table space. But as of now, I have no complaints and I did not have any constraints when I was using it both for daily tasks and also gaming as well. Next, let's dive into how the display quality was during my one-month usage. Now, in terms of the display quality, the first thing that I have noticed is the amount of the high dynamic range or HDR that I could get on this particular monitor as this mini LED panel has 2048 local dimming zones with their very own HDR standard of Quantum HDR 2000. So no, this was not just name dropping as the performance was really great when it comes to using this monitor daily. Now, if you're working in a very bright environment like here in a studio with a bunch of lights or even near a window, because of its high 2000 nits of peak brightness and the overall coating finish on the screen, I never had any issues viewing anything on the monitor or had any problems with glare from the studio monitor when I used this monitor in front of them. So if you're using the monitor next to a window, I'm happy to note that you won't have any issues using it if you're working in that kind of situation. And while I've always preferred a brightly lit up work area, just for the sake of testing, I even tried using the monitor in the dark. And it was really great due to the high contrast ratio, especially for the deep dark scenes. Now, one of the biggest questions that people have asked is that if the curvature of the screen gave me any neck or shoulder strain, well, the very good news is that it didn't at all. Firstly, because of the 1000R curve, it really did follow the shape of my eyes and my overall vision where I did not have to literally turn my head from one edge to the other, from left all the way and all the way to the right, where I just had to sit right in the middle of the monitor and then just look like this and I was all good because the uniformity of the monitor was really great indeed. And it truly feels like you have glued together two 
27 inches 1440p monitor together as the amount of screen real estate of using the monitor daily was extremely impressive and surely has improved my productivity tremendously whether or not I'm writing scripts or even video editing as well. Now one thing I've noticed is that the screen was so wide in front to a point where I spoke in front of the monitor, my voice bounced off the screen as though it felt like I was in an audio chamber. It is not a feature but I thought I would just let you all know. Now since I shoot all of my videos on a high 6K resolution, coming from a typical 4K monitor to this 5K 5120x1440p 1440p resolution, I could immediately see the difference when it comes to the sharpness and the dynamic range when I played my 6K videos even edited or even the raw footages as well. Now speaking of content creation, color reproduction for doing creative work was great even at 89% DCI-P3 and 66% Rec 2020 since this is an HDR monitor. And in terms of the settings, I did tweak it slightly during my overall use which are listed down in the description below for your reference to get the best grayscale results based on my general adjustments. Now speaking of HDR, that is one of the biggest strengths that the monitor had as playing HDR content or even HDR games was second to none. Now this is because of the massive backlit zones with the full array local dimming as mentioned earlier in this mini LED display. Now since my main use for the monitor is more for content creation and video editing, I did not use the 240Hz refresh rate as much but when I play games on it though, it totally brings a whole new level which brings me to my next topic which is of course gaming. So the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 has both AMD FreeSync Premium Pro and Nvidia G-Sync as well. Ray tracing gaming was very apparent during gameplay as well thanks to Samsung's Quantum HDR2000. Now just so you know that I hooked my PC using it through the display port instead of the HDMI 2.1 port since it can support through that high refresh rate through the display port. And gaming with this 1000R curve was amazingly immersive and is something that I'm totally spoiled to the point that I don't want to game anywhere else since I started playing games like Forza on it. And speaking of Forza, to elevate my gaming experience further, I actually got the Logitech G29 racing wheels and hooked it up together with the monitor as well and the experience was just... Then I also tested CSGO as it is one of the FPS games that supports this ultra wide resolution and the experience was so great with this super wide point of view where the screen was smooth with easy viewing angles with the high refresh rate without any screen tearing issue. Now some might think that it is a little weird of an experience but it's surely a worthy experience to try an FPS game on this particular monitor. <laughs> So in conclusion, this Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 is surely a highly recommended monitor in my book. As much as the monitor is marketed as being a gaming monitor, still as a content creator, whether or not you just write scripts or even using it for video editing, it is surely improved my overall workflow. And furthermore, Samsung has also done an excellent job of going through all the downsides of the previous model to ensure that they deliver the best for us users. And what really opened my eye is the fact for a VA panel, I was surprised at how well the monitor performed with no dark level smearing issues. And besides the high 240Hz refresh rate, the variable refresh rate also had an elite response time. And I will leave links down below for you to get it as the most updated price is over there because in the end of the day, my friends, there is no monitor out right now which has all that this Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 offers.